Hi everyone, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. Please subscribe if you haven't yet already. It's a red button beneath me somewhere and if you click on that you'll be subscribed. There's also a white bell next to that and if you click on that you'll get an alert every time I upload new content. And if you like this video please give me a thumbs up, that would make me very happy. Today's video is the 13th in a series where I am taking the Ray Morris Makeup Masterclass book, taking looks from that book. I am not buying new makeup with one exception from my last video. I'm just using whatever I have in my makeup collection, my skin type, my skin color, all those kinds of things to try to replicate these looks. Today's look is Amethyst Elixir and the model is named Mireille, I think, and she's from the Philippines, so she's probably Filipina. And there are some things that are happening in this look that are specifically geared towards typical Eurasian features. I'm doing some of those things, but not a lot because my features are different but I am diving into it and I really am enjoying this. So if you would like to see how I got this look, please keep watching. All right, step one is to prep the skin, which I've done with moisturizer and um, under eye cream and all that jazz and also sunscreen. Then we are lightly foundationing and concealing where necessary. I'm gonna go in with CoverGirl Ready Set Gorgeous in 105. And I'm going to use a brush. This is just a Real Techniques foundation brush. I'm using a brush. He's not saying to use a brush, but in all of the other looks that I've done with Ray Morris, she always has, has a, always is using a foundation brush as opposed to a sponge or something like that. So I'm just gonna buff this in. I'll speed you through this a little bit. and then concealing where necessary, so obviously under my under my eyes. I did use some, and this is the neutralizer color, I did use some MAC Painterly Paint Pot on my lids just because I wanted to give myself some kind of a primer that had a kind of a color in it, like a beigey color. I also apologize, my windows are closed, but they're doing construction outside and they're talking. They're on their lunch break. I waited until they were on their lunch break, but they are talking, so I have no control over that. Then she says, she concealed down the middle of the nose, which will make the nose appear thinner. I'm gonna use my ColourPop Concealer in Light 17 G3. This is a much lighter color than I would need. I bought a bunch of ColourPop concealers just because I wasn't sure which color would be the best for me. So center of the nose to make it appear thinner. And I'll use my foundation brush to kind of, this is a really thick concealer. So I'm not sure if that's making my nose appear thinner, but there we are. It's actually breaking up a little bit. I'm not sure if you can see that on my nose. So I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of this concealer on top, not concealer, with the foundation on top and just buff that in a little bit. All right, then she says to lightly powder the T-zone and because we're using powder eyeshadow, lightly powder the eyelids and under the bottom eyelid. I'm going to set my under eye, but I'm not gonna powder my face because I am going to contour later and I'm gonna use a cream contour. She, I could use a powder contour, but I wanna use a cream contour and she's also saying to use a cream blush. I'm not gonna be using a cream blush, I'm gonna be using a powder blush, but I never have much luck with putting a cream product over powder. So I don't wanna have powder on my face until I'm done with everything. So I will set it all in the end, but just gonna leave that it is, as is for now. Then we are applying a purple pencil heavily on the inner waterline of the eye. I'm going to use my NYX Slide On Glide On pencil in Pretty Violet, Jolie Violet. I'll speed you through that. All right, then we're taking a light purple eyeshadow on a detail point shader brush and apply it along the entire under eyelid area close to the lash line. I'm gonna use, I don't know what this is, but it's a really small BH Cosmetics brush. I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna use some Fix Plus because I want it to really stay where I'm putting it. I'm going to use, this is a Kiko High Pigment. This is Wet and Dry in number 25. A matte and I'm going to pick up some of this and entire lower 
lash line. And I'm going all the way to my inner corner. I'll speed you through the other eye. Then using an angle brush, take an intense purple eyeshadow and intensify the outer lash line. And it looks like this is only happening on the bottom. I'm gonna use Coastal Scents Deep Grape, and I will use some Fix Plus. Oh, and they do say outer lower lash line. So just the outer edge of my lower lash, and I'm using a Morphe E11, so a pretty decently sized angled brush. So I'm really just going over the lighter violet that I used before with this darker color. All right, step three, we're going to take a smoky metallic gray eyeshadow and apply it to the top lid right up to the brow bone. I'm going to use ColourPop Partridge. And because I'm using a ColourPop shadow, I'm gonna use my finger instead of a brush. At this point, I have nothing on my upper lid, on my lids, ex except for the paint pot. So putting this on my lid and bringing it up to just beneath the brow bone. And I will do the other eye. Might go in and use a brush just to blend that or not, I'm not sure. Still thinking about it. This is a gorgeous color. It's more duochrome and kind of greeny than I remember it being, but that's totally okay. This was the closest I could get to having a metallic smoky gray. Using a black eyeshadow with a medium oval shadow brush, start at the lash line and blend to just under your brow bone. Keep a clean eye brush on hand to help blend those two colors together. Unclear about why we are doing the, did the foundation first and the eye second, because there might be some fallout from this, but I'm gonna try to clean this brush off as much as possible, just banging it so I don't get a lot of fallout. I'm gonna use a Luxie 249. I probably got this in an Ipsy, it's a dual sided. And then the one that I have on hand to clean up if I need to is a Luxie 239. This is a precision shader brush. They're very similar. This one's a little bit more kind of angled on top. And I'm going to use from the Melt Dark Matter stack, I'm gonna use Dark Matter. So I'm going to put some pigments really dark and I'm just gonna bang it off on my wrist just to kind of tap off whatever fallout I might get. And, all right. So it looks like we're just kind of covering up, following the same area that we did with that, with the partridge, with the smoky gray. and. I think it probably is easier to do this with something like a Super Shock Shadow beneath it because it gives it more to adhere to. I am getting a little bit of fallout. And I'm going to blow, it's not really helping. I'm gonna go like that. Okay, so I have some on my cheek. What I'm gonna do is blend this away a little bit with my finger. And I'm just gonna apply a little, actually I'm not going to apply anymore. I'm just gonna take the same brush that I used before that still has a little bit of foundation on it. So I didn't wanna, so close to where my concealer is, I should have put loose powder under my eyes just because of this. So I think it's blended pretty well. I don't think I would change anything about that. So that is done. Then using a black liquid liner to line the top lash line, extending it out on the outer edge towards the temple. So it sounds like we're doing a really modified wing here. I'm going to use my NYX liquid black liner. I'll speed you through that. And actually, as I'm revisiting the finished look, it looks like the, the gray kind of shadow does go up higher, like really truly beneath the brow bone. So I am bringing this up higher. And I might do some blending. That looks a little bit stark. Gonna go in with the clean Luxie brush that I didn't use for blending together those two colors just to soften this up a little bit. All right. Then step four, we are curling lashes and applying false lashes. So I'm gonna curl my lashes. I'm gonna go in with this set of Eyelore 003 three quarter length accent lashes. And I'm gonna use my House of Lashes clear adhesive. I'll speed you through this. All 
All right, that's done. And then she's saying, because this is a Eurasian eye shape on the model, I'm using a rounded false eyelash, which has more length in the middle as opposed to the outer edge. So what I used, these lashes are shorter on the, shorter as, as much as it goes in, and then larger, longer as, as it goes out. But she's using a different set of lashes on this particular model. Then we're doing brows. So curl lashes apply false lashes to find brows. And I'm gonna use my Anastasia Brows in dark brown. Uh, I will speed you through that. Then she's saying, once the lash glue has dried, you can softly apply mascara to the whole top lash. I'm not going to do that because I'm gonna use these again, so I don't wanna put mascara on them, but I will put some more. I'm not sure if you can see the band on that lash. It's kind of showing through, you can see that. So I'm gonna cover up the band with just a little more of that same NYX black liquid liner that I used before. Then, we are shading and contouring the nose, hairline, and cheeks. And I'm not going to contour my hairline because I have bangs, fringe. I will contour my cheeks. I'm going to use Fenty Amber. It's a cream contour, and I'm going to use the Sephora Angled Foundation Brush. It's a number 47. And this is really nice for just blending kind of in a C motion, upward C motions. I'll speed you through this. And I guess I will try a little contouring on my nose. I don't generally do that at all, but I will give it a shot. So I'm gonna take the same foundation stick and I'm applying it kind of on the angle of my nose. I'm going all the way up to my, almost all the way up to my eyebrow. And I'm blending this with a ColourPop E7 brush. It's probably an eye brush, but I just want something to be able to do some light blending. I'm okay with my nose. I don't really think it's too narrow or too wide, but I guess the whole point of this is doing the steps in the book. It does seem, well, it's certainly more contoured. It, it definitely seems more angular, so that's that. Then we are finishing off with the Feminine Soft Pink Cream Blush. I'm not gonna use cream, I'm gonna use a powder. I'm going to use the Balm In Stain in Spring. It's a really pretty light, feminine pink color using one of these Real Techniques pretty glittery brushes and just applying this to the apples of my cheeks and I because I didn't do it before because I knew I was going to be applying the cream contour I'm now going to go in and powder my face with my Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless powder and what she's saying also is because I've made her skin dewy so I think that she was using she does look glowy she probably was using a more dewy foundation. She says to make sure to apply moisturizer to anywhere that your skin will be exposed. So I guess on her shoulder blades or wherever her skin would be exposed. And then, oh, and then a nude lipstick. I almost forgot that. Nude lipstick will also go with Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. I'll speed you through that. That's that, I like this. I really am enjoying the the colors. I, I don't think I was meant to use the, Partridge is just a more duochrome green than I was remembering that it was. And I know I was supposed to be using a metallic smoky gray, but I like this. So thank you so much for watching. I'm really, really, really enjoying doing this and I'm appreciating you watching. A lot to do in the world, a lot to do on YouTube. And I really appreciate the time that you took to spend with me today. Take care and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.